How many of you here think you are a maker? Can I get to see a quick show of hands? Okay, that's great. Hands are raising up. I'd like to show you an image and remind you one of the activity that we all enjoyed doing in our childhood. Do you all remember this? This is one of the activity that encouraged us to use our hands to, to build something. We used to see different shapes and patterns and experiment with materials. Basically, it gave us freedom to share our voice and gave us the space to build our ideas into reality. This is one of the activity that actually was preparing us for the real world until this happened in my life. I was given textbooks and asked to memorize answers. I felt I lost that maker, that explorer within me along the way, like how most of you sure would have felt. Adam Savage, one of the renowned television producer, host, and public speaker said, humans do two things that makes us unique from all other animals. We use tools and we tell stories. When you make something, you're actually doing both at once. Okay. Okay. We are all natural makers. We don't actually learn to make something, but we actually make to learn it. This is me, Harish Srinivasan. I'm an educator and a learning experience designer. And I always feel learning is an experience and learning can only happen through an experience. I love interacting with children and they are my biggest teachers. In one such interaction, I asked them a question. I asked them, how will your dream classroom will look like? From the students, there's one of them raising his hands. His name is Vimal. He said, he would love to have a separate green board inside the classroom so that he can share his ideas to his friends and also teach. There's one more student called Ramya who said she wants a circular benches like how you're all sitting here. She wants to collaborate with her friends and build something meaningful. Two things hit me hard in this conversation. Children don't have the freedom to share their voice. Children don't have the space to build their ideas into reality. So I asked myself, what if every child has the voice, every child has the space to build their ideas into reality? I thought, how our world would be. I, along with my team, Infant Engineers, decided to create that space, create that world for our children. This is one of the maker spaces that we had set up in our school. As you could see, Makerspace is sort of a collaborative workspace where people from different walks of life comes together, experiment their ideas, play and tinker with it. You can literally make anything out of available tools and materials inside the space. Children come here sort of every week along with their friends and they used to prototype different projects, models, test out their ideas. They work as a team, they even take risks and even make mistakes and learn from it. Like how we all learned in our early childhood. But looking back at my school days, I felt I was really good at three important things. And I like to share what are the three things I was really good at in school. School made me to be quiet. School made me to follow instructions. And school made me to remember information and write exams. I was super really good at all these three things. And I'm over the checklist to be considered as a good student and made my parents and teachers super happy. But when I faced the real world, the ask was entirely different. It asked me to speak and express. It asked me to not follow instructions but come up with creative ideas. It asked me to not just remember information but asked me to apply it and then learn by doing it. In make a space that we set up, we actually try to mimic the real world. Here, children, try to communicate and collaborate. Children come up with creative ideas to the problems that they see around. Children work along with new projects and learn by doing it. I'd like to introduce you to Seymour Paput. He was one of the co-founder of MIT Media Lab and considered to be the father of Maker Movement. He proposed that the best way to ensure knowledge is built in the learner 
is through active construction of something shareable. It could be a poem, it could be a program, it could be an idea, or it could be a project. Samuel Papert believed that everybody needs to do something to actually build it. I'd like to share you an example of a project we did in our lab, and it's called Egg Drop Challenge. As the name suggests, children here needs to make sure egg when dropped from a height should not break. So now, they have a challenge in their hand. They need to use materials that are available in the maker space. It could be cardboards, it could be straws, it could be popsicle sticks, it could be materials that they could pick and choose. And they go through a design thinking process, they come up with understanding the problem, they come up brainstorming solutions, they work with a team and request for materials, they build the prototype first, but when they get to see it fail, they're again coming back to the drawing board, redesign it, and again try to make sure their model gets better. As facilitators, we just don't see this as a fun activity. There are some fundamental science concepts that are triggered through this egg drop challenge. Children learn the concepts of force, gravity, loss of motion. We also teach them how cushioning works and we also explain them how airbag and car work so that they could easily relate to what is happening in the real world. And I feel in this space or in this activity, you could see children have the freedom to express their ideas. Children have the space to build their ideas into reality. There are some three important arguments that are going around maker spaces, which I like to clarify now. The argument one is, usually people say, maker space needs large space and cannot be set anywhere. I feel maker spaces even could start from your home with available materials. And it could start in one of the corner. If you feel you have cardboard to discard in your home tomorrow, just think that you can even give that cardboard to a child who can make something out of it. With whatever space that is available, you can make sure you can start it. If you literally have no space, just wear the maker cap and build something like a maker trolley, which could carry the supplies in your home, in your school, in your community, or in a, in a library. The second argument is maker space needs expensive tools. I classify materials in maker space into three different categories. One is low tech. By the name, you can get to know that no tech is something that deals with your cardboard, popsicle sticks, your glue guns, your basic art and craft supplies. Mid-tech involves your electronic components, breadboard, multimeters that you have loved tinker in your, in your childhood. And high-tech components related to 3D printers, robotic kits. I feel makerspace does not need to include all of these. There is no hard and fast rule, hard and fast checklist that you should have all these materials for a makerspace. You could start with what is sort of available in your makerspace and could always build on from there. So we have kids who loves building using cardboards as well, as they, how, how they are interested in building using high-tech robotic kits. One more interesting information is that all these high-tech equipments are becoming affordable day by day so that more students can get access to. The third argument is that makerspace needs experts. It needs STEM experts. I feel nobody in makerspace is an expert, including the teacher. The role of the teacher here is not to transmit information like how it's usually done in other classrooms. The role of the teacher is to be a learner here and as a facilitator, motivate children to come up with their own solutions. So we don't need experts actually, but we need passionate people, passionate facilitators who can guide, motivate children to be that change makers. So we are all here, but why we should all care about maker spaces, making, and makers? I think maker space, one of the interesting things that we could see maker spaces popping out across the world. As we go by, there are tons of maker spaces that is already coming out in the near future. In pandemic, we got to see makers around the world solving problems for what they could see. In pandemic, most of the makers built 
sanitizer stations, built face shields, and they were actually creating that impact that we all wanted. This is one of the makerspace community in India. It's called Makers Asylum. They had built over 1 million face shields in just record-breaking fortnight, uh, fortnight days in the, in the COVID time with the help of volunteers around India and with the help of small manufacturing hubs they could see around India. So I always feel makers are the real superheroes now, which we wanted more of it in a country like India. A child who is born in 22 will get to schooling in around 2026. He or she will pass out of school in around 2040. Can we even imagine how the world will sort of look like then? But I'm sure about one thing. What we can do now is to empower every child with the superpowers they needed to thrive in this real world. The superpowers that will make them to solve problems, that will make them to accept challenges, and that will make them to change the world for the better. Next time, when you're meeting a child, don't ask, what is your ambition? Instead, ask, what problem you'd like to solve? And give them the space and tools they needed to build some solutions. And I'm sure every child will make this world a better place to live. Thank you.